Hey, what's up, beautiful people? This is Storm Norm, and I'm grown. And this is your girl, Jackie D, and I'm sexy. And, and together, together, we, we have, have a situation. situation every Thursday night at 11 p.m. on, on BKS1radio.com. A glass of wine. Right on time. Right on time. Grown and sexy. It's on tonight. Time for me. Unwind Candlelight The mood is right Bring the heat Storm Norm and Jackie D Jackie D Giving you A dose of reality Adult conversation Hot relationship topics We play your grown and sexy music requests And I'll be giving you a dose of reality With the latest gossip on your favorite reality TV shows So if you're grown Sexy Be a part of our situation Every Thursday on BKS1Radio.com You already know what it is Another Thursday night BKS1Radio.com on the throne. Sexy. We both gonna say situation. Because it's going down tonight. Shout out to DJ Smooth P on the ones and twos. You know how we do it every Welcome. Thursday. We got special guests. If you're wondering, that's not Jackie D. <laughs> she had a little that makeover. Is, that's my man, Jeffrey Still in the building. Right. He's gonna rock out with us. He's our co-host tonight on BKS1Radio.com. But it's gonna be a great show for you, cuz. A great topic, and we want you to keep it real. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. The phone lines are open. If you want to call in, 646-233-1302. Call in again at 646-233-1302. All right? Call in. Jump in the chat. Andrea Starr, she got the chat in tonight. The building. I'm Storm Dome in general. And again, this, this to be here. handsome young lad next to me. You know what I'm saying? No Elmo. This handsome young lad next to me is Jeffrey Still in the building. Say what's up to the people, man. Oh no, hold on. Is your mic, mic on? Is Microphone mic check on? one two one two. Is he getting sabotaged? Uh oh. Ja- mic Jackie one, sabotaged two, one, two. the mic. So. Oh, okay. There you go. Say, first of all, thank you all for having me here on the show. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely, bro. And um. Uh, Jeffrey, you know, he's a friend of the family, man. Every event we go to, he's usually there doing his thing, looking suave. He got, you know, I don't want to get him in trouble. He got some young lady on his arm or whatever uh-oh, like uh-oh. that. You know, they seem he to rolls block like that. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to, when I grow up, you want to be, be like him. this, man. Yes. <laughs> Watch yourself. Be careful what you wish for. Right? Uh, uh, be careful. <laughs> now, now, look, the topic tonight, and again, the topic kind of fits the, the movie tonight. In case you don't know all right we're definitely going to talk about the new movie it's going to be on lifetime february 16th 8 p.m eastern standard time on the lifetime channel pastor brown pastor brown produced by a friend of the show mr rashawn freer and uh so we should have some special guests calling in tonight of course yes yes the incredible miss angie stone Right, I love me some Angie Stone. Yes, what? yes, yes. Matter of fact, yes, uh, Spoo Pete, give me some Angie Stone. Bring me now, back to the classics. In, 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 in case you don't know this guy, if you're living on another planet, you haven't <laughs> seen him in, in a movie or two because he works harder than Samuel Jackson. He does. His name is Mr. Keith David. And uh, I'm just going to show you a picture of this brother just in case y'all Everybody know. knows Keith David once yeah, they you, see him or hear know. his let, sultry voice. Yeah, let me find a little picture right here. You know. Now, I'm going to have to tell Keith, some of his movies, he scared me, yo, because he's right. mean. He be mean in some of his movies, but he's a pastor. In this movie? In this movie. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Yes, he's Pastor Brown, I I'm think. used to him, like, jacking people up. Yeah, jacking just, people up, know, clubbing them in the head, talking me. Yo, you better have my money. Roughnecking them, you know, yeah, just yeah. crazy. Tough guy. I remember him in um, Dead Presidents. Oh, yeah. Y'all remember that movie, Dead yeah. Presidents? Yeah. Great yeah, movie. Yeah. And um, he was in Dead Presidents, man. And, and Jeff, man, step up to that bank, man. You a talk show host. We gonna we gonna talk about Jeff Steele, you know, um, and what Jeff Steele is all about and everything. And, and before we even go into the topic, Jeff, introduce yourself to the world, to our BKS One Radio listeners. 
Well, first of all, like I said, I'm happy to be here. My name is Jeffrey A. Steele, host of the new Jeff Steele Talk Show. Um, basically, a show that features fashion, music, comedy, and dance. A uh, show that's inspirational, motivational, and real. I know he cool, but he don't I know. He don't want to mess up that hair. So. Oh, <laughs> to my, my fresh do, man. Come it doesn't on, go man. with the look. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't match the outfit. You good, Jeff. You Deep. good. Okay. I can hear it now. Yeah, right. there you go. Sounds a little deep, too, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. Step, you step up to it like, like, like this. You know what I'm saying? See, uh, me, I could do okay. a little bit like this. Oh, I can play, hey, ladies. I'm going to do a little Barry White up in here. There you oh, go. Lord. There you go, man. You okay. got this. It's the grown, sexy situation. So tell everybody, man, about, about the world of Jeffrey Steele. Well, basically, um, uh, right now, I'm working on the Jeff Steele Show project. Uh, it's in production now. I filmed maybe four shows. Um, my background pretty much is in fashion and club promotion. And I'm back in that also. I'm working on some projects for the new club downtown called Stadium, mm -hmm. in which we're actually going to kick that off um, February 19th. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And it's going to be uh, jeans and stilettos. Uh -oh. All right, so with downtown what, Newark? Downtown Newark, downtown uh, Mulberry Newark. Street. Okay, okay. And that's going to be the kickoff because with the Jeff Steele Show, in addition to fashion, film, music, comedy, and dance, I'm going to, it's going to be a combination of uh, Steve Harvey, uh, in Living Color okay. and Soul Train. Okay. All right okay. now. Call me the Black out. Don Cornelius because okay. I'm about to bring oh, it to oh, you. We need Don oh. back. We need Don back. Right. <laughs> I'm in my All jeans right. and stilettos tonight, so I'm ready for the party. I, I peeped that out as soon as I yeah. came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he said. It's called a lazy night. That's Soul what that's Train, called. Steve Harvey, all of that. We want to give you a little bit of everything um, at that's the same day. Mm, excuse me, at the same time. He wants to say the same damn time. He going to be riding the Steve Train. The new train in town. That's what's going down. <laughs> so with my show, basically, um, I'm going to have dancers that are going to be performing in the, I call it my pretty girls or pretty people soul train line. But if someone is grown and sexy and they can dance and they look good, they're welcome to come on down. We're letting everybody in free to six. Okay. And we're okay. going to do some footage to actually add to the shows that we've already recorded. I know. Y'all heard that. Black people free. Free till what? February 19th. Free till six. Free till six. After so six, after how much they going to pay? We're still in negotiation. All right, see? <laughs> see? That's what I'm saying. You can't beat that. See? Ladies have price. Five, $5, man. There you go. See, the ladies, you know. They can spend $5. Man. But Females, y'all get over But if they have the right heels on and the right jeans, they might, be able, to, they might be able to slide in. <laughs> VIP, definitely. No doubt, no doubt. Let's give a little chat room love. Everybody streaming. Who is in the chat room? I'm in the chat room, guys. Andrea Starr, so oh, I want right. to shout out to that, everybody. That chat. I don't know if you can. Right? Can you no, go down I, on it? Not too far down. And uh, hey, Nancy. Nancy's Pause. in the building. Nancy said Nancy. shout out that she's in the building. And guest 1865, if you can leave your name. Otherwise, I'm just going to call you guest 1865. And that sounds like a jail number. So. No doubt. Oh. No but doubt. thanks for being in the chat room, sipping that water, um, even though we're popping bottles tonight. So thanks for being in, you guys. I'm excited about you, tonight. You know, well, I think Nancy. That's our Nancy. Oh, I remember Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, big shout, shout out, out to Nancy. Remember, remember her and her and husband. Her husband, <laughs> Sammy. Sammy. And today is Sammy's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Sammy. Sammy. Happy Facebook, birthday. man. <laughs> happy big birthday. Big shout out to Sammy. You know what I'm saying? Nancy and happy, is family. Happy birthday to you, man. I know that's the happiest man because she said, I'll right. do anything for my husband. She she hit us last time with the with the uh coming to America. Whatever you like. But they've been married like, like twenty three years. Man. Oh, that was a beautiful couple. It was great to meet them. Huh? Yeah, I'm saying that that probably happened. Uh, well, you know, she was doing um a different type of barking, but like a fun type of barking and it was volunteer. Well, she was the big dog. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> she was the big dog. Hey Trey, I see you in the uh, chat Shout room. Shout out what's to Trey. Up? What's up, mama? And mine, right? Everybody's in the chat mine, room. Mine, right? Mine, right? What's up, bro? What's up, family? What's going on, man? So, look, we are gonna go right into this topic. And uh, A Star, can you read what the topic is? On the grown and sexy situation tonight. Our topic tonight is letting the past go. Can you let the past go? Can you let the past go? I think can we went other little, people let the past go. I think go we, for yeah, you. we went a little deeper than that. I don't think he wrote down the full. Oh, you want to read? You want to read that? I has, can't even see. Has it. someone? Oh, has someone ever, ever used, used your, your past, past against, against, you? against you? Oh, that's the topic. Oh, oh, let me let me turn down the music for this. Oh, that topic. Oh, that topic. <laughs> has someone ever used your past? Let me let me get situated over against here. you. Now I want y'all to either call in. Or put a situation in the chat 
and keep it real. Keep it 100 on BCast One Radio. Has someone ever used their past against you? Oh, we're going to fix uh-uh. his mic. You talk to the people right quick. So, and we're going to fix his I'm mic. I'm going to start off on this one. Has someone ever used your past against you? It is so unfortunate. And I'm going to talk about myself right now. When people don't know you or they think they know you and they want to judge everything about you and then let you know about it over and over and over again. I think that's unfortunate and it's unfair. Now, my question to you guys in the chat room, does it happen more to women or does it happen to more to men? Are you judged by your past? And it can be anything. But um, I am experiencing that right now. So Mic that's check. my opinion. On it. Are we working over there? Oh, yeah. We're okay. good now. We're good. Fabulous. We are so good. tonight's topic again. Hold on. Has, someone, Has ever, someone ever used your past against you? Let me find out. You need these two. Mine's a Walgreens. You, you oh, can get oh, well, let me tell my other story. I just went to the eye doctor. Okay. And my eyesight has um, decreased. And I thought it was because I read little small reports at work. He told me, no, it's because of my age. Told me the same thing. Hey. Yeah, I wasn't laughing. That was not funny. Real, but he yeah. kept it real with you. But then he diluted my eyes. I had to drive home and did not tell me that I would not be able to read. I think that was last week when I was yeah, on the radio. Yeah, show. I remember. I couldn't read. In t- I couldn't even read the next morning when you, I woke up. <laughs> you I couldn't see anything. <laughs> you was on this mug like <laughs> ebony. <laughs> I couldn't read the chat ivory. Right? I didn't realize how much we rely on reading. It so, was scary. Yeah, it was yeah. scary. So we're not going to let you avoid the question no. of the night. Has someone ever used your past against you? Yes. All right, tell us the story and keep it real. But not knowing my past Mm -hmm. judged me for what they assumed Mm. they saw me out and about living. Yeah. So what what did they think about you? What did they say? How did they judge you? They feel that I have a lot of male friends. Okay. And that assuming because I have a lot of male friends that I had something going on with all those male friends. Mm. Well, if that's the case, I'm a hot damn H.O. <laughs> that's not the case. <laughs> you could just have a lot of friends. Mm. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. But it really um, is hindering the present friendship to the point where I just think I need to cut that friend off because it's not worth the argument right. and the headache of being judged because I have a lot of male friends. Right. I'm a social person. I'm out a lot. We do a lot of functions out. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, there's things that we have to do. Right. I'm just being cordial and being kind to people. I'm just a friendly person. You know how to play. You just socialize. I like that. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I am a little player. Yeah, look, look, he's sugarcoating it. <laughs> You're not a player. You just, nah, I'm just messing no, with you. No, no, but I do have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends. I've, you know, grown up in this town. I know a lot of people in the area. So you so were judged I, just because. So just I was because judged of because of that. And I don't think that's fair. This is the first time it, in my life I've ever had to experience that. And you know what? And I'm angry about it. I just want to say. Yeah, I'm judged a lot, too. And I and I think that's what the whole premise of this movie. But when when uh, the, uh, Rashawn Freer, the producer of Pastor Brown, when he calls in, and uh, he gives us a little... Uh, synopsis of what the movie is basically about but that's what i think it, it's about too you know people are judging people and people are, uh, are using somebody's past against them yeah so um it's going to be very interesting and um yeah i would say plenty of times i was judged because of my past i can see you in and, the and, and, and and um when you when you're younger you make a lot of stupid mistakes mm-hmm. so and i think this is all of us True, Smooth true. P, oh, you just never made a mistake in your life. You're He's perfect. perfect. No, I made mistakes, but <laughs> I've I've always kind of been ahead of, ahead of my time. I've always been more mature than my my age, and uh, you know, I, although I mean, everybody makes mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I was just waiting for it. We all right. make mistakes. Yeah, I just said I make mistakes, but <laughs> yeah. I didn't make a whole bunch of stupid mistakes. Yeah, I, I think things through. I've always been a thinker. Stup- so. Stupid mistake could be riding that scooter into the wall. <laughs> Riding that scooter in the wall, which which I did. But that was no. Storm. No, not no, me. No, I, tell you, I know, I know. I'm but I'm going to tell you, when I, early on when I got into this business and I got into the whole producing thing and the whole studio thing. Yeah. Um, Man, it was it was music. It was the fast life, partying all the time. And it was women. And it was women. He so making it rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, yeah. When it was rain. Yeah, and a, and a lot of times I would just jump into situations. I was young. I didn't know no better. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I probably, you know, I had a lot of female friends. Mm-hmm. So, that was my, my lifestyle when I was younger. I wasn't married. Well, a few times I've been married. <laughs> wasn't married I, at I, that time. I wasn't time. married in, in those situations. But I did things that when I look back on it now that I regret. 
I wish I hadn't done, but it kind of molded me into the person I am today because my focus is like there today. Right. You know what I'm saying? And like, well, mistakes are made to build character. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it was, it was just that. You I mean, wouldn't luck. be the man you are today if it Absolutely. wasn't for those mistakes. Exactly. And, and luck, yeah. I, I, hands down, I love women. You know what I'm saying? I love women. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm single at this point in my life. Um, I'm happy about the man I am now. I'm proud of the man I am now. Okay. You know what I'm saying a lot wiser. But there's people that will still bring something up that you did maybe 24, 25, yeah. 26 years old and still judge you on that and base that that's the type of person you are today. Yeah. And this is what we're talking about. Like, do people ever realize that, one, people mature, mm-hmm. they grow, and you can change? So... That's my story. I mean, I got more stories. I'm quite sure, Andrew. You got more mm-hmm. stories. Smooth P, you probably got a story yeah. where somebody probably judged you on something and they was totally wrong. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I want to I want to hear hear Jeff's and I want to hear yours. Well, as far as speaking of the past, um, the past pretty much I like to leave in the past. All right. But as to echo what you said before, uh, things we've done in the past when we were younger, people still judge me on that now. Um, Mistakes I've made, and I've made a few. I've made a many, but that molded me to the man that I am now. Right. Um, and I can honestly say I had celebrity status at 18, 19 years old with modeling contracts. Came into a, you know, as pe- going to New York, people asking for my autograph. Right, right. I couldn't handle it. And then I started partying, hitting Studio Uh-oh. 54. And- Let's see. We got our first caller. Hold on. Caller from the 818. State your name when you call her from you on BKS1 Radio. This is the grown. Sexy situation. situation. Real deal. So you know who this is? This is, this is? this is family here. Family. That's Rashawn Frere. Can we clap it up? What's up, Producer, Rashawn? film producer oh, no. Rashawn Frere. I, I, I know you guys are tired of me. No. Never. First of all, never. Rashawn, never tired of you. You are family, man. We love you, bro. What's going on, man? Nothing much. I am sitting literally right now in the middle of Hollywood. You hear this helicopter? I have oh, to step nice. outside because I'm at Forrest Whitaker's premiere at the Pan African Film Festival right. where Sally Richardson is introducing the film. Wow. But you know, I couldn't leave you I couldn't leave you hanging. I know is Keith on the line yet? Keith's not on the line yet. Um Keith's okay. not on the line, but we got you on the line, man, and and I'm glad you called in because you could actually set the movie up. Because our topic okay. tonight is the topic tonight is, has someone ever used your past against you? Has someone ever used your past against you? And that kind of follows what the premise of what Pastor Brown is about. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. Um, it's, uh, yeah, that's a really good topic. Because you know something that, you know, until a person walks um, in their glory and finds their destiny... You know, we all care about what people think of us. I don't do that anymore. I mean, granted, sometimes I fall back to it. But on the real, as long as I got the Holy Spirit, I really give a damn. Excuse me, I didn't mean to say that. Mm-hmm. Um, what people think about <laughs> me anymore. Oh, because the fact of the matter is... I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. The fact of the matter is, you know, when, when you're secure in who you are and you're living a good, righteous life, I mean, we're not all perfect. But if we treat people like we want to be treated then you're going to attract like minds. Right. Sometimes. You know, when you're trying to be something that you're not, you're going to you're going to attract those demons. Right. I call them. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I've had people use things, you know, I have to, I have to, you know, I get it in. I used to get it in, I'm going to say that. Okay. And uh, people used to, as I became more um, uh, blessed, people would come up and say, you remember when you used to do that? I'd be like, okay, I will not be your friend when I make my money. <laughs> right, right. Because they, they, like to, they like to tear you down. People that are not doing anything want to tear you down and, and bring you back to where you were. But if you're securing yourself, I own everything I have done. I have got it in. I have gotten it in. I, I have burned the candle upside down, sideways, around the way. I am thankful I am still here today. Amen. On Amen. the real. Amen. Amen. So if somebody's going to throw something in my face, I say, yeah, but I'm still here and I look good. I'm still here. A- absolutely. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite uh, songs by the Williams Brothers, I'm still here. That's right. That's right. Now, now right. Rashawn, could you take us back to, to the essence? I know you're excited 
that the project is going down now. Could you take us back to the essence of where, where with, with the writers and when you said, I'm going to get involved with this project? Well, it's so funny is um, Markman Dunbar, I met him in the hallway and tomorrow when you talk, this is, this is what I, I, you know, I'm telling everybody, um, this is the past about a week before the premiere. And I met him in the hallway at the Motion Picture Hospital here in L.A. And I was, at the time, working at Warner Brothers, and I had not yet transitioned into the creative side of filmmaking. I was working, I had a desk, 9 to 5, doing syndication TV. And I gave him this script called Dirty Laundry, and I said, I want you to be in my movie. I didn't know him from Adam. And he was like, uh, okay. Uh, and, you know, people just blow you off. And that's one of the things I love about Keith David, because Keith David, I did the same thing. I walked to him and gave him a script, and uh, it was a Christmas and comedy script. And he said he read it, and uh, it took us a while to make it. But during the process, I, I got Pastor Brown, and I said, Keith, I want you in my Pastor Brown movie. And, it's, and that's how it all came about. I got a script. After we did Dirty Laundry, Rockman and Carol Shine, my partners on the movie, said, Rashawn, we want you to come on and do Pastor Brown. And right. I, you know, at that time, I was transitioning into walking into my um, destiny because Desiree Coleman Jackson yes. had been praying over me. Love okay. Desiree. <laughs> yes. I like that. And I did pass the Brown to give thanks to the Holy Spirit and to Desiree because they said, when God blesses you, you have to give back. You have to fellowship. Okay. And that's the reason why I did pass the Brown because, one, it's not overtly spiritual. It's for people like me that be in the dark side mm -hmm, uh -huh. and need to get some coverage. Nice. Right. And when you see the movie, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about because it, at the end of it, and I, I keep you know, I saw it in my own eyes when we screened it to Great Ed Allen in uh, Jamaica, New York. Right. Great Ed Allen Cathedral, am I saying it correctly? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, Jamaica Church. Over 2,000 people came to a pre screening. Mm. Wow. And, uh, so supportive. At that screening, I saw something that I never would have thought that I would see after somebody seen the movie. And it's not one of these movies where I kid you not, you're not going to be, um, it's not only that the Bible hits you upside the head, it is so overtly that you don't expect it. Right. And when it hits you, you're not going to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. Because 60 people went, after seeing the movie, gave their lives up to Christ. Oh, beautiful. Wow. Oh. And, and I kid you not, I kid you, I mean, I, 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 this, this movie has gone through a lot because it is not supposed to have been seen a lot of day when it comes to what it does to people. I had the worst relationship with my brother. I couldn't stand my brother. I did not. I, I mean, we did not even speak. Wow. You know, ever since we were kids, because he's just cooking for Coke Plus. And um, when I started shooting this movie, doing the tr making of this movie, one of the things she said, I have removed the, the thorns from my eyes. Mm. And I realized I cannot be mad at him because he was born mentally challenged right. and that my parents have to take care of him, and, you know, and he doesn't appreciate what they do for him. Right. And, and my mother would cry wondering, how is, who's going to take care of him? I said, well, don't give him to me because they are there. And then I realized, as, I, I kid you not, it, it really changed me when, when in, in, in the movie, making this movie, and it said, uh, wow. removing the doors from my eyes, and I realized, only by the grace of God, that could have been me. Yes, wow. absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I mean, I can tell him, blue in the face, I'm going to tell you, when you see this movie, out of all the movies you guys know I've done, right. this is my baby. Right. This is the movie that will define my career. And I have three other movies coming out after this. And God bless me, for the next 20 years, I'll be making movies. But I will always revert back to Pastor Brown because it was, is the, the project that I believe um, was meant for this universe. Very inspirational. Like, and, and let me tell you, I cast a movie at Tyler Perry's house. 
Wow. 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 Me wow. and Ruckman, um, Tasha at the time, Tasha Smith, invited me to Tyler Perry's party, and everybody in Black Hollywood was there. And I was so proud. This is my movie. I'm going, I have a script. I'm getting ready to shoot this movie. You want to be in my movie? Oh, and, I love it. You got to like, the point. Are you kidding me? Who does stuff like this? Right. You right. do. I and, love it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we started. That's how we got the cast. Cast is the matter. And we had to cut people out. We had Indy Irene. We had Bryce oh, wow. Wilson. Ty, uh, Keith Sweat. We had to cut them all out. Wow. You can they save them for the cut. next movie. Rashawn, this is Andrea Starr. It is great to meet you. And right now, I am loving the passion and the energy yes. that you are just giving us right now. I can feel your excitement. I can feel the passion. I cannot wait to tune into this movie to see this. Now, you said you have three new movies coming up after this as well. Can we expect the same right. type of feel of Pastor Brown, or will they be completely different topics? Well, see, this is what uh, is so funny that you say that is Dirty Laundry was about tolerance. I don't know if any of you guys ever seen it. And um, Pastor Brown is about redemption. My friend, my film, Hope, Home, not Home, Hope, Home, we did that. We just premiered it at Sundance, and we shut Sundance down. When I tell you we shut Sundance down, we shut Sundance down. We went to church. And we're taking it. I'm going to be in New York on the 13th. I'm coming home. Uh... I'm, I'm going to do a screening in New York. I want you guys there. Because when you see this movie, you're going to be blown away. It is just a beautiful film. And I did it for my brother. It's about... Mm. Uh, um, I became involved because of my brother. I, I can't take credit for the writing. That's Jonah Oliver that did that. Um, but I did it because it's about mental health. And people that live with mental health issues really want to be cured mm -hmm. and all he wants and uh bingo remember bingo from the wire mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah bingo is the lead oh, oh wow, wow. He and what he wants guess. is to find a home and in the course of this movie you know he just wants to find a home he wants his home and this movie will just tear you apart it just, it will tear so we're going to need because, tissues when we watch this movie. We're going to need a box of tissues, what I hear you saying. You're going to need a box of tissues. You're going to need a box of tissues for Pastor Brown. Wow. Because you're going to see something in your life that will reflect. when you see this movie. Now, you're going to see something. Because I have to tell you this one story. Okay. Her name was Rita White. And the reason why I remember this woman, because we were screening at a Hampton University. We did a bunch of small screenings around the country to um, build the momentum. And this woman's sitting next to me, and she's on her little black bear, and she's da-da-da-da-da. And I said, I started talking. I said, what brought you here? She said, you know, I don't see these kind of movies, because this is like Tyler Perry kind of movies. And she said, but, you know, my boyfriend said I need to come, to, you know, um, support his cousin, and not knowing that I'm the cousin, that my um, cousin is um, uh, William Harvey. Um, the president of Hampton University, and um, she said, um, and then um, said, you need to come uh, see uh, see this movie that my family member made. And she said, she says, not knowing that it was me, and she's talking all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, cool. Well, I hope you enjoy the movie. I'm like, okay, really? Um, just enjoy the movie. During the middle of the movie, all she just boo-hooing all in the, in the movie. I'm looking over at her, and I'm like, okay, well, there it is. I thought you don't like this kind of movie. Right. Afterwards, she says, I got to get this movie. I got to get my family members to see this movie. I got to get my mother. I could have brought my right. mother in there. I mean, she's talking. Just blah, 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 blah. So beautiful. then I say, you know, she says, where can I see it? I said, well, it'll be out in the box. It'll be in the theaters. She said, oh, no, no, no. I said, it was be in the theater. She wanted to buy the DVD. I said, well, it's not going to be a DVD until it comes out in the theater. You know the whole spiel. Right, right, right. Not knowing that the following week, I was doing this sneak screening at Howard University. Oh, great. Can you believe this woman came with 12 carloads of people? Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's the right there. That's what I'm talking in Hamp in in at home from Hampton, a two hour drive. What? She brought her mother, her cousin, sister, neighbor, everything it. else. 
And I remember her because she stays on my Facebook page, and she just posted something on my page today. She said, premiere alert, if you see any other movie, right, right. you need to see this one. I love and we it. just got a notification today that In Touch Magazine has, um, um, it'll be in the magazine this week. The movie to see this week oh, is wow. Pastor Brown, A Lifetime. Oh, great. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I know about. I'm telling long stories. No, nah, no. Nah, that's beautiful. You know, that's, <laughs> I feel it in my soul. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful thing. Um, we going to church yeah. this now, movie. Now, tell the listeners, man, how did um, Angie Stone get involved with it? In, 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 in the role that she plays uh, with the movie. I'm getting ready to call Angie because, you know, she's on the set of the R&D Divas. Ooh. I don't know if you know this. Angie's going to be part of the R&D, R&D Divas for um, the I coming season, the second season. Okay. Yeah, I heard that. So she, she's right now on the set, and she said, I'm going to call in, um, um, but I'm maybe on the set. So I'm just letting your listeners know. If, um, there may be a little conflict. I talked to Keith. Keith is supposed to be calling in because he's on the East Coast right now. He flew in today. Okay. okay. So okay. I may just have to dial his number and call him in with me. <laughs> with a, a little three-way this, action. This is this, this how yeah, we do it. Yeah, a little three-way action because I know that, that he just got in to New York. So let me just tell you Angie's story and then let me try and get them on the phone. And, and, okay? and look, and, and also let Angie know that if she's on the set of R&B Divas, she could, she could use this She could use this interview on the uh, actual episode. <laughs> just saying. She could put us on speaker. <laughs> no, we, Ricky was supposed to be um, the character that that, that uh, Angie plays was originally a male character. Oh, wow. And I'm trying to remember the actors that we were going for they were named actors. Uh, we were trying to get Terry Crews. We were trying to get who are some of the other actors? I mean, some really named individuals. And Angie really wanted this role. And the one that we were trying to get Angie for, it just was like so predictable. Right. And so we just said, "Why don't we make Ricky a female?" Mixed and wow. Ricky is. Is she runs the girls at the strip club? Okay, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Edge. Be a little madam in the house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and when you see Angie, you'll be like, "Damn!" Because she well, she no, she she don't play. She, she played it hard. well. She don't play. That. And Monica, yeah, Monica and Sally are the girls in the strip club. And when Sally leaves to go take care of her father, uh, she would call in and. Monica be like, girl, you know, Ricky looking for you. And mm-hmm. and all in the background, Ricky was like, tell that hoe I said she don't come back. <laughs> 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 she ain't going to have no job. <laughs> don't be playing with my money. Play, a right. little players club going on. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Wow! Yeah, I can see her yeah. doing that though. I can see her. Yeah, like, yeah. Really shout out, it shout out to Angie. She be cast one family too. She's been on the show before. We love Angie. And uh, yeah, we did an yeah. interview with her when we let, was in Atlanta. Let me see. Give me a second. Let me see if I can get Angie and I get Keith on my phone. Okay. Definitely, definitely, man. Definitely. Hold on one second. Big shout out to Rashawn Fred, producer wow. of yeah. Pastor Brown. Make sure, man, write excited. this down, people. Get your pen. Get your pen. Pastor Brown is going to premiere on the Lifetime Channel. Saturday, February 16th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Pastor Brown. It's going down. You get to watch it on the Lifetime channel. And this is the movie, but it's going to become a television series, too. Oh, nice. Yes. So we're going to talk to Rashawn about that and just how all that happened. You know what I'm saying? That was, like you said, that was his baby. That was his baby project. You know what I like that he really said that when he let go, of the anger and animosity towards his brother, that's when all the blessings and everything just flowed in. When you just let go and release and move on, the doors open. Right. And, and when, this is just a testimony. Right. Of it. I and, love it. And when you hold on to things, you you kind of block your blessings. Yeah. That is correct. You know. So um, we're gonna we're gonna. And that's why I don't like hanging around haters that want to keep up bringing old ish about you because you blocking my blessings. Yes. So you know what? Let it go. Peace out. You just need to be cut out of my life. So th- you know, because to me, I'm all into like the power and the energy and the flow. I don't need anyone blocking my blessings. Let's well, read something about what Steve mm-hmm. Harvey said. He said the hater makes me greater. There you go. Absolutely, bro. That's the truth. The hater makes me greater. And for every hater I get, I get Timmy Blood. You get love greater. Yeah, and, there you and go. That's what I'm talking about. So keep on hating, people. Keep Hate on. on hating. 
hate on. Haters are your biggest fans. Yeah, because really right. you checking to see what I'm doing. Trey in the guest room says, when people bring up your past, it's usually because that's where you left them. Yes. yes. 6840 says, if people bring up your past, that's how they remember you. They are often surprised when you are completely different from how they remember you. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They, they hate on that also. Yeah. yeah but, but you know what? Hey, Sorry. Just Hate you know, me now, love me later. Yeah, yeah, because I, I love I love the person I am. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, you know, I'm in a good place spiritually in my life right That's now. Beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm good. I'm happy with me. And even before I wasn't a, a bad guy. I just back in the it's day, nice. I just I just love the ladies. Well, that was your business and your ladies and your private actions. And <laughs> I still, I guess in, in you real talk, out. I'm so. single. I still love the ladies, right. but. But now I'm looking for the lady. Uh-oh. Amen. If you like it, then you should put a ring on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just can't, saying. You can't go but, by that. Sometimes you put a. Well, let me leave. Right. Good, go, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, Jack. <laughs> Sometimes you can put a ring on the wrong one. That's that is it. true. Preach, my brother. Preach. <laughs> I did it once. Uh oh. So Pete, I put the but ring baby. on. The, I'll put it once. on the right one the second time though. Oh, smooth, yeah, smooth, Pete. Tell us your. I know you got a story of how people judge you wrong, bro. Yeah, you know, same situation, something similar to yours. You know, my younger days, you know, always been known as as a ladies' man. It's funny what what uh, Jeff just said when I actually first uh, got married to my first wife, and you know, I see people, you know, talk to my tell them I got married. Like some of them was damn near passed up. You got married? Uh-huh. You you settled down? To, not like I wasn't ever settled down before, but I've you know I've been in. You know, monogamous relationships many times, but anytime I was single, I was single. You know, if I'm a single man, I'm a single man. You know, so I had multiple friends that I dealt with, but I always kept it real and I always let them know, you know, that you're not the only one. So, you know, I wasn't. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know, I let them make that decision, but, you know, it was always, that was the reflection. I was just, you know, well, he's, he's a player. You know what I'm saying? I was just uh, the rep that I had. Ooh, whether it was, was, I mean. <laughs> Stop it! I'm seeing another side of you tonight. I'm, well, I'm, you know, I retire. I retire my player. I keep it in my wallet because you always got to keep. You, you I know. met your wife. She ripped that up. It's you know, done. but, but oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's way up. it's way retired though. But you know, it's yeah. it's all. I mean, you know. He probably got a private closet in his house, but that's locked up. Nobody got. I can't find nah, it. Deep <laughs> he's in a private closet. closet. Nah. But you know, but you know, it is what it is. I'm I'm happy in my life, like I said, with one woman. See, it, it that, all that comes with. With wisdom and age, you know, so when you're younger, you think that quantity is, you know, what's important. And when you get older, you realize that it's quality, quality, you know, I'll take the quality over quantity anytime. I've always Absolutely. wondered, though, what is it of anyone's business? What you do in your own personal? It really life? isn't. Nobody. Um, Why does it matter? Yeah, I think because people want to judge. No doubt. Exactly. I think that's Rashawn calling us back. Uh, Rashawn, is that you? We got you back. Yeah, that's me. I got Miss Angie Stone on the line. Angie! Oh, Angie. Angie. Hey, how's everything I going? I'm here. How you been, Angie? I'm doing great. I'm, you know, very busy, thank God. Um, and I was telling, I want to apologize to everybody, number one, because I was supposed to be on with you guys earlier, but obviously you heard about the storm in New York. Yes. And I was in New York, so I had to try to get out of New York. I'm currently on the highway driving 14 hours to Atlanta. Well, well we, just, we, just glad you, we just glad you're here. The last time I seen you, Angie, this is Storm Norm from BKS1 Radio, was in Atlanta. Hey, babe. How, How you doing, doing, sweetheart? That's right. That's right. Yes, yes. Now, now I'm hearing great things about you yes. and your role in the movie Pastor Brown. Tell me. How are you? Yes. Tell me the experience about when, when you, when you uh, filmed that movie and just the, the transition between Angie Stone and your character. Well, the, the um, owning a strip club is definitely not my character, so it was challenging for me to do something and exciting that I normally would not would never touch. And uh, it really was testing my chops at acting and letting me know that I had what it takes to act. Um, I had fun working with Sally and Monica and. The idea that the role was originally written for a man and I came in and mixed the role as a woman was an accomplishment in itself. But I have to tell you, you know, being Ricky and being the boss or the head be in charge <laughs> was a great feeling because, um, I, you know, I had to really go into character play a role and 
I only wish there was a whole lot more of it. I think it's great. I think it's a great piece of work, the embodiment of work, some great actors attached to. And I'm just glad uh, that I was, you know, Sean and everybody that really believed in me gave me an opportunity to show that I, you know, I, I got a little something going on. You, well, you you got a lot going on. I mean, I I've seen you in several films. Um, one of my one of my favorite. I can't think of the film name. Was with um, what one was that? With, with Cuba Gooding in in uh, what's that? Beyonce. Oh, oh yeah. Fighting Temptation. Yes, yeah, Fighting. I I, I, I love that. She was yeah, funny I, in that one. Yeah, I love that movie. But anytime Angie's singing in, anything, anything, you know I'm what there. Saying? I'm, I'm glued. I'm, <laughs> Angie Stone got me through like early college days. Just I'm a huge fan. Wow. I'm excited right now college that midnight run it's still in my car i love it on repeat huge fan right now now another thing we got to remember about angie too another song that touched me was finally she was a female that didn't do a male bashing song uh-huh. with, with black brother <laughs> so you felt safe i i, I love yeah. that song <laughs> now i know well, you i get... think that that song mm-hmm. I, I think that that song was a pivotal an important song to one's career because not only just my career, but just because women and men were doing a lot of damage to one another. Right. And that song was, you know, timeless. It was something that set a standard to say, hey, 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 we cannot do this to each other. So, you know, that was one of the things that as a woman, I felt like, you know what, well, somebody's got to be the bigger person to step up and, and, and turn the tide. And, you know, since uh, long since James Brown did say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Mm. It was really, really testy for me to do that song, but it worked. But I, I, I'll tell you, uh, just because I don't want to get off to so much in the Angie Stone and her music, I really uh, am delighted for what uh, Rockman and uh, Sean has done yes. with this film because it put a lot of people... Uh, back to work, and I think you guys know that a lot of people's careers, just like Brad Brother, touched a lot of brothers. This this embodiment of the film put a lot of people back to work, and I just want to thank you guys for that. Thank you. Um, you know, I have when I tell you um, we're we're doing the series, and I've already presented to you for um, the series. Um, you know, the series is going to be totally different, and when I say this is. It's going to be a different character for Angie. It's not going to be the, the, like the film. But I, I really am, you know, I'm very grateful to people that help fulfill my dreams. And Angie Stone is very gracious, loving. She came on the set. She came, did her job. She gave 110%. Oh, um, I couldn't ask for anything more. And we were on a budget. And, you know, um, she is a phenomenal woman. That's all. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can I can just praise graces and blessings upon uh, Angie Stone. Oh, great! Yeah. Well, you know what, Rasan, I mean, and, and, and you guys, now I know you you on a time slot, but what's important is the embodiment of work. Something it, it, it's not about money. It's the move, and it's taking this project quite a minute to get uh get the attention and be on the forefront. But I'm so glad that it's Pastor Brown that it's a faith-based movie, that it's something that is contingent on, you know, the gift and, and, and the love of Christ and everything that it embodies as a whole. And it's coming at a perfect time in my life and my career. I have a gospel song all uh, out with Ken Jones and Joanne Rosario called All Day, Day Jesus. I have uh, an album out called Rich Girl. So for Pastor Brown to come for R&B Divas to be you know, right there on the scissors. It's 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 kind of enlightening to know that at the end of the day, the series that is going to be, in my opinion, something that's necessary right. will be passed around, and that I would take more of a spiritual tinge because I, I I hope he got it written in the script that she comes back and gives me and make me something in that church. There you go. Yes, yes. That was and my there question. it is. Yeah. There it is. My question. Because we... it, it's uh, I, I when I say when we get ready to, to um, shoot the pilot and, and, and the characters that are coming back, um, you're not going to be ready for them. You're not going to be ready for them. You're going to see 360 degrees. You're going to see how, um, you know, we all fall down. I just want to be clear. Um, I am here today 
by the blessing and grace and the mercy of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Because, like I said, I have burned the candles inside, sideways, upside down. So I just want people to know that if they fall down, you can't get up. All right, now. Right. That's right. You know? Now, now, Angie, let me let me ask you. Um, one of the, the premises, the themes of the movie, was people judging other people. Has anybody ever used your past against you? And that's one of the themes of, of Pastor Brown. Has anybody judged me? Yeah, ha ever used your past against you? Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. The devil don't play fair. Uh, they dig up stuff. Uh, uh, I'll give you one quick example. Um, I was dating uh, a guy, and, of course, you know, just, like, just a short chase, cut chase to it. One of, the, one of the things that I ask people is, you know, do you have a girlfriend, like, married or anything like that before we even go there? And the answer was no. I was about six, seven months into a relationship. Okay. And by out. I find out that my husband is pending a divorce. Before you know it, he gets a hold of it and he just drags people, you know, for no reason. Right. So the backlash of judgment is, is an open forum for people to be judgmental when they really don't know the do's, the don'ts, the ins and outs right. of a situation. Doing this film, I was going to bring some backlash, but I love the fact uh, that I'm playing a strip club owner and that, you know, the transformation that is so necessary and that is okay. happening actually in my life will go, go hand in hand with the film that it's almost, you look at it, it's God almost designed it this way. So the judgment, uh, the, the, the judgmental thing is, is never going to leave us. You know, God was judged up until the final hour. But we have to look at that and say, who am I right. to complain? I won't complain. That's great, Angie. I have hey. another question. What is your ideal role that you would love to play in a in a movie? Well, one of the things that I one of the things that I really want to play um, in a film, you know, it's easy to play a mother. It's easy to play, right. you know, an auntie or something. But I really love the idea of playing. Uh, mastermind of some kind, mm. uh, an assistant to a DA, someone who decodes things, someone who, you know, works diligently to to solve the mystery. Or mm. to, you know, I'm, I'm really a big on drama, so I'd like something. Um, if I had my way, uh, I would love to see Miss Jane Hitler remade and, and I could play that role. That's how serious it is for me. Okay. Well, we got to do that then, because <laughs> I love me for Miss Jane Pippen. Wow. <laughs> wow. No, seriously, I, think that's your I would, I would love to get the rights to do that, because that is a movie that, that just, I remember as a kid watching it, and she going up to that fountain to get that water. Uh -oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just think there's room for the for this generation. I mean, that song, is, I mean, that that. I'm sorry, that film is, is iconic, and to have it redone, you know, with, with the light, I mean, I'd really, really love to do something like that, but I, if it's something that's music-based, I would have loved to play uh, the role of Gladys Knight in her life. Ooh, I could see that one there. That would be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Angie Stone is Gladys Knight. Ooh, I'd be right there. Yeah, that, that would be, that would that be, would be crazy. You know, Angie, we need to sit down <laughs> and just really make some, I, 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 I just want to work with you again. But I'm serious with when I say you have some really good ideas. Um, to, to be able to do these projects would be a blessing. Because I don't oh, know. Absolutely. I, I, I don't know. Do you guys know about the Miss Jane Pittman story? Yes. yes. Oh, oh, yes. I watched it several okay. times. Okay. And and I would love to be able to do this, do something with you like that, um, Angie. I mean, on the real, on the real, real. I think, you know, I'm, I think, I'm I, like. I think we hear the next project we, it's so right here. for this generation because a lot of great films, uh, we were afforded that right to see, but they're so removed now. That you know, it's like they just did still Magnolia's over. Oh, I, I you know, we got to reach back and get some of the stuff that really, really made a difference. And I think that's one that made a difference. 
Yes, and and so you know that their ratings for Lifetime was four million viewers. You know I'm pushing hard for four million viewers with Pastor, well, Pastor Brown. Brown. Let's do it. Woo! Absolutely. Let's let's support that. Absolutely. February sixteenth, Saturday, eight p.m. Right, Rashawn? That's absolutely correct. Yes, let's let's support that and uh, let's get those numbers up. And, and Angie, I know you you're driving and you're headed somewhere and everything, but before you go. Um, when could we look forward to seeing you on R&B Divas? Well, we're actually filming now. Um, it's been exciting. It's been interesting. And, you know, of course, after Celebrity Pick Club, I was going to I wanted to do reality TV again. But I have to say, um, so far, this is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, this, uh, we have about eight more weeks of filming. So I would say sometime in March, okay. April, you should be. Uh, looking towards the episodes dropping one at a time. Uh, and I see you in TV, man. I can't wait. A a absolutely. Right. Now, I know you can't expose it all, but what side of, uh, of you that people are going to see different than the Angie Stone that we're used to seeing? Well, first of all, you got to remember that I'm pretty much, uh, I've been in the business longer than any of the women on uh, in the ensemble uh, I've got 34, 35 plus years in the business, which means I'm, I'm truly a survivor. So other than something different, if you had to take that home, what would you, what would be my position on the show to you? Wow. I like that. I like that. Mm. I can't wait to tell you. I'm, I'm asking you that. What would be my position? How would you see me and what role would you see me in? The sweet, motherly, strong, directive woman in in the group. Yeah. That's how I would yeah. see No, no, sure. uh, Everybody's uh, coming uh, to you uh, for uh, advice. There you go. There you go. All those words work. All that scenario works. And it, sweet, yes, but, you know. But respectable because you're still going to hold it yeah. down. You're still going to tell people and, about themselves yeah. and keep them in line. Um, but strong. And, well, and I just, I just, I'm not going to... Uh, I don't want to reveal anything, but I can just tell you that, you know, I've come this far by faith. Amen. 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 All right? Amen. The show will not define you, and you will keep it moving. All right, now. <laughs> okay. We don't, we don't want to catch you tonight. Well, Pastor, <laughs> Pastor, Brown, Pastor Brown coming out. But I mean, everything is lining up perfectly. I'm waiting on you uh, with the series because that, to me, is next. And I'm just excited about it. Absolutely. Declared. We have Glenn. declared it. Miss Angie okay. Stone. Active. So that Jason, is that amen. Stuff. And, and, and you know what? Before we let Angie go, Angie, can we get a drop? Like, this is Angie Stone uh, of the uh, movie Pastor Brown and also R&B Divas. And you're listening to BKS1 Radio. Hey, this is your girl, Angie Stone of Pastor Brown and the R&B Divas. You're listening to BKS1 Radio. Keep it locked. All right. All right. Such a professional. Oh, professional. Hey, Yo, she's a pro. Okay. First, first she's a pro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angie. Angie. Safe, safe travels. I'll see you next week. All right, Angie. Take care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We love you. Keep me close to the song. Love you. Love all. you. Okay. Okay, bye. -bye. All right. Bye-bye. That was the wonderful, incredible Miss Angie Stone. I love Angie Stone. On BKS1 love. Radio, the grown sexy situation. Shout out to Rashawn Freer, man. Rashawn's doing, doing it his big. Thing. The movie's out. The series is about to pop. He got other projects. Rashawn, you got to write yes. a radio show project in there for us because we can act. Well, you know what? I got to find something for you guys to come in and do a cameo. For sure. Absolutely. Okay. Unreal. For sure. On the real, you remember that movie "Waiting to Excel? Yes. When uh, that guy on the radio station. Yes, I remember. Uh, that. Oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But we we need to we need to do something like that. We have to have a scene in the movie with 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 all four of you. Absolutely, you let's do it, man. We'll I, be right. I can yeah. cry on cue. You know, I can act. <laughs> what you say? I said I can cry on cue. I can act. <laughs> <laughs> not really. I am not mad. I'm not mad. I have to apologize to Keith. Because Keith was confirmed he was going to be there. Um, but, you know, he came through from the West Coast to the right. East Coast. And I think maybe he is asleep. 
<laughs> knocked out. Working well, you working them hard well, is what well, you're you, doing. Well, you know what? Then we have to get yeah. Keith on. If he can't make it tonight, we'll get him on tomorrow's show on the Only Women Wear High Heels show on the Owl show. All right now. Yes. And, you know, you're going to have Locke tomorrow. So, you know, yes. he's uh, um, really excited. And uh, he's just got engaged. And, um, you know, I'm going to see if I can get Sally to call in as well. You know, it's just trying to wrangle all these people. Yes. I'm sorry. That's a helicopter flying over. Um, you know, that Trying Hollywood to wrangle life. these people is kind of hard. You but, know. But you know what? You We're on for another hour and some change. So if you get a hold of Sally Richardson, call on back, man. <laughs> for, sure. for sure. Well, she's right here. She's 10, about, uh, 10 on the inside about uh a uh, uh, feet uh, about a few feet, uh, few feet away from me, but she's right in the middle of the interviews right now. So if I can swing it, I will make sure within the next hour we call back in. All right, Rashawn. definitely, Rashawn. We appreciate, appreciate you, Rashawn. man. And Always, again, brother. family, we love you, man. Safe travels, bro. Thank you. I love you too. You guys trying to come down to Atlanta for the premiere? We're gonna try yes. to make it down. We're discussing. We're discussing it this week. Actually, we definitely gonna try to come down. Okay, great. Great, great. Okay, so I'll be checking in with you guys. I thank you so much for the love, and I really, really appreciate you guys on the real. You too, man. Thank you, Rashawn. Have a good okay. one. All right, thank take you. care, man. You too. Peace and blessings. Have okay. fun tonight. Bye bye. All right, y'all. That was Rashawn Freer, hey, producer of the, the movie. Parking lot. Get this call. Yes. I love it. Yes, he Pastor is a Brown. Man. I'm oh, excited to see that. Yeah, he's doing. He's doing some yeah, big, big things for sure. Um, that's definitely. Um, and his family. Yeah, our, our, our family and everything. And uh, if he say he gonna do something, yeah. he gonna do it. So expect to see BKS One Radio mm. in an episode. Of Pastor Brown, you getting ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for my part. Cameo. Yeah, and I and I know, you know, shoot, we can pull Jeff Steele in there too, you know, because he's an actor already. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, he already got his chops up. So, man, tell us about your projects. And big shout out to everybody in the chat room. The phone lines are now open. You can call in six four six two three three one three zero two. You're on the grown sexy situation. We're gonna take a quick music break with Smooth P, and we're gonna come right back. Cause guess what? This Saturday. What is this Saturday? Not next Saturday. This Saturday. What is this February Saturday? 9th is the Who Owns the Mic Aquarium Birthday right, Bash. Oh. Birthday celebration. They're giving Aquarians me. Aquarians in the house? Yes, yes. I am an Aquarian. They call us They're giving the CEO of BKS1 Radio birthday celebration. It's February 9th. is going down to Kenilworth in Kenilworth, New Jersey. The tickets are only $20. A uh, free buffet. Live DJ. Performances by great comedians, singers, spoken word artists. It's going to be off the hook. Prizes. I like prizes. Yes. And grown and sexy people. Grown, sure. sexy, grown people. sexy people. Come look nice. Red carpet affair. It's going down. Drink specials. Everything. And then for those select few, if you get a certain ticket, you will be invited back to the presidential room. Uh oh. After that, where we're having another party, just VIP. With the staff and certain people. That's right. And everything on the radio. So definitely come out there. That's February 9th. The doors open at 7 p.m. at the Kenilworth Inn. Exciting. Celebrity industry judges got Mr. Don Blassingame. He's going to be one of the judges. Shout out to JB. Shout out to Love Logan. Celebrity publicist will be in the building. One of the judges. Shout out to Bob Sumner. He's going to be in the building. One of the judges for the event. And also our friend, my sister, Miss Audrey Egypt Blanc of the Movement Magazine is going to be one of the nice. judges. Yes. Shout out to Egypt. Exciting. You know what I'm saying? She's going to be in the building. It's going to be an epic night. Trust me. Dancing. Yes. Performances. Fun. Food. Drinks. Partying. Good people in a live broadcast. Be careful on radio. You're definitely going to want to be there at the Kenilworth. And it's going down. Wait, sure. till, wait till you hear the talent. That's going to be wait. in there. Shout out to Carmen Brown. Yes. She's going to be singing her, a song there. Shout out to Deborah Church coming from New York. She's going to be in the building. Hold on. This is Rashawn calling back. Calling Let me back. find out if he got some. Did he get somebody already? Okay. Are you guys ready for this? Yes. Be ready. Be ready. Drum roll. Drum roll. Sally Richardson, get ready. Come on. Miss, is that Miss Sally Richardson? Give her five minutes. Oh, okay. she's gonna, she's, I'm just setting the stage I'm for her Miss Sally Richardson. He's warming us up. All right, I'm, a fi I'm finding her picture right now. <laughs> He's getting ready. But wait a second. I'm going to take a picture and see your picture. She is 
When I said, I said, well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, damn. Sally, I can't even. That's all I can say is damn. She looks, <laughs> boy. Just saying. Sally was is always bad, man. Always oh my god. Woman. Jeez. Wait a second. Here's Dondre. Dondre's here. Shout out to Dondre. Dondre Whitfield. Whitfield. Yeah, Dondre. I know Dondre. Oh, what's up, boy? Say hi to uh, the folks on the radio for BSK Radio New York. Uh, Sally's getting ready to get on, and uh, we're on the internet. Nope. Shout out to Dondre. Is that is that Dondre Whitfield? It is Dondre Whitfield, sir. Hello, hello, what, hello. What's going on, bro? How's everything, man? Everything is beautiful. Just over here at the Pan African Film Festival, just supporting our folks and you know watching uh, beautiful talent do beautiful things and just trying to fit in somewhere in the middle. Could could I tell you something? Uh, Bro, about you, just the effect you had on my life. Uh oh. I'm gonna keep. Wow. It, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Every okay. pitch, every pitch I ever see you played in, you always had a beautiful co-star next to you, man. <laughs> He's got a good job. <laughs> you got the best job He's on the planet. Job. Well, let me tell you what. Um, you know, I I just uh, did a, a project for uh, ABC called Mistresses. That should be on um, this summer, and uh, Alyssa Milano is the lead in it. But I play across from Rochelle Hayes, and um, that should uh, keep my string intact. So look out for that. Fun, wow. exciting. Wow. Yeah, she's a great talent, and she's a beautiful lady. When my when my wife is going, she's like, "Well, who's playing your wife?" Right. And I'm like, <laughs> "Rochelle Hayes." She's like, "Woof, she's beautiful." When oh. my wife says a woman is beautiful. You know she's compliment. beautiful. Yeah, man. And I think my wife is super fantastically beautiful. I think a lot of you, people think you, that too. You and most of the men in America, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you, one luck, one lucky man. So I know you're probably working on several projects, man. And uh, and feel free. Yeah, feel feel free to tell us about any one of them that you're working on. Well, you know, mistresses, like I said, that should be that will be on in. Um, uh, in a couple of months, and then I'm about to do a project with uh, uh, for Tracy Edmonds, uh, starting across from Michael K. Williams uh, from Boardwalk Empire. So oh, nice. Yep, look out for that. And then you know, developing a couple of things. I'm working on a cartoon. Um, I'm really passionate about that because I got two kids. I got an eight year old daughter and a four year old son, and I just see a huge uh, hole in. Uh, the kinds of cartoon programming that they uh, seem to gravitate toward, because that's what the you know what the networks push. They don't seem to have the kind of stuff that we had a chance to look at when when we were kids. And so I'm really trying to um, uh, fill a, a, a hole in that area and, and give our kids something that entertains them as well as educates them at the same time. So. Really looking forward to doing that. Good. Now, you are you a character or a voice on the cartoon, or are you just writing it? I will be because I think that my, my kids will enjoy that part of it more than just the part that I actually created it. Because <laughs> uh, we've actually, we have a couple of friends that, you know, do voiceovers in some of these, you know, huge cartoon, you know, these huge uh, animated films. And um, whenever they get a chance to meet one of them and they hear their voices, they just go over the moon. So I'm really looking forward to, to delivering something like that for uh, for them, too. That's a great gift to give to kids. I love that. Yeah, Definitely. yeah Definitely. that's a beautiful gift. You know what a great <laughs> gift for me would be? What's that? If Dondre hooked me up with, with Golden Brooks' phone number. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you look up the <laughs> Hilarious. Well, if you were out here, I might be able to do you better than that. I uh -oh. might be able to give, get you the intro. Uh-oh. Oh. Okay. That, that's, how I, that's how I roll, man. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. We, we, we only know how to do that Brooklyn. one way. Shout if you're really about it, really about it, come on through here. And I'll give you the introduction. After that, I'm going to have to step out the way. You're going to have to handle your manner. That's, <laughs> the talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I, I did not know you was from the East Coast, man. Yes, sir. Brooklyn born, bred all day long. Okay. Okay. That's, that's Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why he's cool. Yes, yes. You Brooklyn. know, that's one of the things. You know what? It's interesting that you said that because uh, I was um, I was asked to... Uh, 
Tracy Edmonds today. Okay. And, um, and, you know, she said, wow. You know, she said, Dante, when I finally got a chance to know you, I really realized that, you know, from all the things that I've seen you do in your work, I really didn't realize that there was, like, another layer all together with that I had no idea about. And, you know, most of the role, you know, I, like I said, I, I grew up in Brooklyn. And I grew up having to fight every day because I was a light gay kid with curly hair. In my neighborhood, that's an invitation to a fight all day long. Pretty boy. So, <laughs> so you know, they just, like, as soon as you were walking around, oh, this is pretty. You're like, I, I'm, I wasn't trying to be none of that, man. I just came out the door. <laughs> I'm just trying to go to the basketball court. And she was trying to live my life. It. But I had, to, I had to get through all of that. And fortunately, you know, it gave me the kind of skin that I need in this industry. Tough skin. You know, I, nothing that, that, that this industry could put me through could come close to what I had to, what I had to go through, you know, growing up. So I'm, I'm built for it, man. That's great. Are those the type of situations we can see in your cartoon that'll be coming? No, actually, you know, one of the things that, that I want to deliver to our kids is that, you know, m most people in our industry think that kids in the inner city have to have something that's related to something that's in the inner city for them to be able to relate to it. And it's, it's completely the contrary. Kids in the inner city don't want to hear that. They know what the inner city is about. They know what struggle is about. They want to see what, what other parts of life are. They want to experience things that they've never experienced before. I, one of the most dynamic things that ever happened to me was when I was in junior high school and we went on a, a class trip to a dude ranch. Mm. I, I, that blew my mind. Because right. mm. I'd never been out of Brooklyn. I, I, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm surrounded by vegetation and surrounded by all these animals and I had no idea that I was a cowboy. Right. <laughs> I had no cowboy, idea I was cowboy a cowboy. You know, I'm like, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting every day. I got no idea about none of this, but they chose, they, you know, in, in order to, to uh, show the other kids how, you know, to ride, they chose one kid out of the whole class to demonstrate it. And they chose me. Oh, that's great. And it turned out that I was like, you know, I, it, me and that horse were just like, we just were like, what? And to this day, I have a huge affinity for horseback ride because right. I just, of I love it. one experience. That is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And, the, and that one experience made me realize, like, I was like, wow, people actually live out here? Like, you live on a, <laughs> like, this is, you know, when you see it on television, it's one thing. But the television is like a, 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 a thing that, that seems to have great distance. You don't really experience that until right. you get a chance to really touch it yourself. And when I got a chance to be out there and see that for myself right. and experience it for myself, oh, my God. It's like it changed my life. Oh, that's great. Oh, wow. wow. How inspirational is that? Yeah, that's... I feel like I need to go we, pull we some def kids now. We definitely got to get Dondre back I on. Know. The chat room so, is blowing up um, right now, Dondre, I must say. Listen, I'm, I'm getting ready to defer to my wife. So here she is right now, Miss Sally wow. Richardson Whitfield. Hold on. Hello there. How are you? Oh, my God, Miss Sally Richardson. How are you? <laughs> we over here at the Pan African Film Festival in the lobby calling y'all. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been, Miss Richardson? I have been busy raising children and acting and directing and trying to keep my hustle on. I got tuition to pay. You got tuition? That's right. That's I got right. tuition. I got yeah, kids. They got to go to school. I hear that. Now, look, I heard great, wonderful things about you in this movie, Pastor Brown. I'm hearing some yeah. good things. So, And they're all true. They're all true? <laughs> no, I heard I heard you did your thing in that. Now, tell me about the role. I think I'm doing an interview in there. Okay, I'm sorry. I got people. I got security knocking me out of places here. Uh-oh. <laughs> now, so, t tell us about your character, Jesse. So I'm sure he's told you it's February 16th mm -hmm. and um, she, you know, it, for me, it was a great film. I mean, how often do I get, you know, does an actress get an opportunity? I'm going from a stripper to uh, preaching in a church. Right, right. You know, and uh, 
and it's believable and it's wonderful. I don't know. I'm sure my husband was just there. We have a wonderful cast. We've got uh, Tisha Campbell and uh, Tasha Smith and Ernie Hudson and Michael B. Jordan. We have an amazing cast of people. Nice. I cannot wait to tune in. The energy that we were just hearing from it, I can't wait. I was told I need a box of tissues to get ready. So w what's the biggest part uh, of the tearjerker you know, that I need to be ready for? It, it is. It, it is. I mean, I think it just takes you through so many different emotions. And, you know, we did this a few years ago, and I have been, it was, it's been one of those films where I've been so sad that, you know, people haven't had a chance to see it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so happy that Lifetime has, you know, given us a chance in showing this film. Now, now, are there any similarities? Now, wait a minute. First, tell your husband don't get upset. <laughs> are, are, are there any similarities with your character in this movie, Pastor Brown? I'm not wow. talking about the stripper. I'm saying just the stripper emotional. The yes, yes. <laughs> are there any well, similarities? What I, what I will say is that right when, when Rothman Dunbar, who directed this, came to me, I had been, when he told me about it, I was like, this is perfect because I had just, like for like the last two three months before it, I had started taking pole classes. <laughs> oh, 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 for exercise, I'm sure for exercise. <laughs> yeah, for for exercise, you know they they teach them out here in L. A. and um and you know it's, it's all women and I was like okay that'll be fun I want to know how to do that and it just seemed to work perfectly and then of course I grew up in a Baptist church so I knew what that was so I was able to um, identify. Wow. Mm. See, God works okay. in mysterious ways. He was preparing her and getting her ready exactly. for the next chapter. See, I, I, <laughs> that was probably the one time your husband was like, go to work, dear, go to work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he loved the scenes, though, when I actually had to shoot the strip scenes in front of the club, though. Oh, boy. I don't know if that made him happy, but, you know. Now, now you know what movie I remembered um, you from? I, I, the name's not on my the tip of my tongue, but you played in it with uh, Keenan Ivory Wayans. Low Down Dirty Shame. Yes, Shane. yes. Oh. Low Down Dirty Shame. Great movie. Wow. Loved your character in that movie. <laughs> that was definitely one, you know, when I look back, that was one of my favorites and had the best time there. Um, and, you know, with Keenan and Jada and, you know, we were just young and, uh, you know, and, I, and when I look back, it's a classic, you know? Yeah. Very classic. Now, Everybody knows that movie. Now, I guess I'm really about to prove I'm, I'm a fan. Now, a lot of people probably don't remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you play uh -oh. the wife of Denzel Washington in Antoine Fisher? Yes, I did. Yes. Yes. Now, see, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, must, I'm, so, I'm so trying now, to have all the leading, I'm trying to have all the leading men. I was uh, I Will see. Smith's wife, and I am legend. Um, I was in a movie with... Um, Let's see. Who I've been in a movie with Sam Jackson. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to get them all. And, and so, what's next for for um, Miss Sally Richardson? I know your husband said he's working on a project with ABC. What's next for you? Well, I just finished a movie with Robert Townsend actually um, less than a month ago over the holidays. I was shooting, and so I'm not sure when that comes out, but you know that'll be out soon. And um, and then I'm just I kind of talking to a few of the networks about another show. I like I like TV. Oh yeah, I see, and you look good on TV too. It, it, yes, and I've also been doing a lot of directing too. That's oh, kind nice. of my next thing. I had a film that I had in this festival, a few of them uh, last year, and I just directed a pilot. So um, I've been continuing on with that. So how is it to switch hats like that? Because directing is not an easy job. I, I finally found a place to put all of my micromanaging and bossing that's mm. perfect for me. There you, there you go. <laughs> I like that. There you go. I know your husband. Your, your husband's probably like, do what you do best, baby. Do what you do best. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, leave that no, at work. No, you know, that look, I can only work. keep. You know, I can only keep look cute for so long. I got to find another job. <laughs> oh no, she'll always be beautiful. Well, well you know what? We're going to have to get get uh, Sally to do a hot drop for us because this this is a great day for me. It's a fabulous day. It's a great oh, day for great me. Day. So some okay, what you want? What, what y'all want me to say? Something like, "This is Sally Richardson of the movie Pastor Brown, and you're listening to BKS One Radio. Keep it locked." Say it again. This is Sally Richardson of. No, no, no! I got that part. Oh, okay. What is it? <laughs> okay, okay. BKS One I know the, Radio. I know who I, I know who I am. <laughs> She's a professional. I'm saying of um of BKS. You're listening to BKS One B Radio. Yes. 
Because you guys are breaking up. That's why I said BKS1. Yes, BKS1 Radio.com. B-A-S-1.com radio. B-K. You had it right. Oh, B-K. B-K. Like Brooklyn. You got B-K, it. Yeah. Okay. Rashawn is going to make sure I'm saying it right. Right. B-K. <laughs> okay. I got it. B-K-S-1 radio. You know they got me. I'm like, there's a 20 million people around me. All right. Y'all ready? Ready. ready. Are you ready? <laughs> this is Sally Richardson Whitfield from the movie Pastor Brown, and you are in B-K-S-1.com. Radio, right? Oh. One more time, one more time. <laughs> BKS One Radio. Am, am I saying? Com. Am I? Am I saying just radio? Yeah, B- BKS One Radio. Okay, got you. Yeah. Hi, this is Sally Richardson Field from the movie Pastor Brown, and you're in BKS One Radio. Yeah, we're gonna give you. Right. We going No, I'm going one more you, you shot. You wanted to do it. One more, one more shot. shot. Yeah, because Sally is. Just... I can't get it. Oh my god. <laughs> BKS. Am I doing it wrong again? BKS1radio.com. BK. Oh, you oh, you want okay. to do the com? Okay, go ahead. Oh, so I, so I am doing two different ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not crazy. I'm like, I not really at all. It's, all one, it's all one uh, word. Oh, you are not crazy. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, honey. I'm so distracted here with everybody around me. It's okay. I want to make sure I get it right. We're not on the radio right now, right? Yes, yes, yes you're, you're live. live. <laughs> this, this, we, do this, huh? we do this to our guests. You are live right now on the radio. Am I live right now? Yes, oh, you are. See, everybody out here thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> oh, no. Not at all. You, not at all. They're they not thinking you're crazy. <laughs> now they're laughing at me here. Okay, people, I'm not as uh, ditzy as I seem right now. I think y'all gonna have to get this drop for me later because I am never gonna get it right with all these people around me. Whatever. Oh, you, you like. didn't get it right either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna embarrass. You're not gonna you embarrass to me no child. more. <laughs> I, I hate to say, but your husband got it on the first try. <laughs> well, you know that's because he's busy. Well, look, we just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out. We appreciate you. You You guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And next time I'll be better for you. All All right. right. All right. Good luck. Good luck. You can come back whenever. Just hit, just let Rashawn know and come on back. Okay, sweetie. Bye. Bye, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Nice talking to you. Bye. Bye bye. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Rashad? Okay, so, man so you night. can't clown me anymore. Sally right? did worse than I did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, and you cursed too? Uh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> but wait, I'm going to take a picture and send it to you guys. Oh, great. When I tell you she is fine right now, Uh-oh. Okay, you're not ready cool. for what she got on. Uh-oh. Okay? Matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to text you right now just you should have my number in your phone, but I'm going to text Just you right case. now. Just to make sure, okay, I, right? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send it to you right now, and then, and then I'm going to call back because I got to get it. I got to, I got you, you got to tell me, did I, did, she killed it, right? Yeah, she killed, she killed it. it. She killed it. She, she killed always it. does, yeah. though. She's fabulous. Yeah, yeah. I, you're on the radio. <laughs> I, I don't realize we were live. <laughs> yeah, I, I love, I love Sally. They just love you. They love you, Sally. So... I'm going to take this picture, and then uh, hopefully I can get Keith on the line within the next 20 minutes as well. Yeah, okay? we're, we're here for another half an hour. We're just going to talk about all the bad things that people done to us and judged us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Okay. All right, brother. Uh, Thanks, right. Rashad. Another great night, man. This is this is this is a great you. night. Who who are, who Yo, are we the getting? The chat room is like on fire let's, right let's now. Let's get some comments they, from the they chat can't, and like, call believe in. What's going on? Hey, um, Trey is out there. Can't believe that who we have on. Egypt's in the room saying, "I don't know those two were married." I girl, I didn't know they were married. I love so Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. Egypt. Yeah. When Rashawn calls Egypt, yeah. back, we're gonna let him know that this interview is gonna be in the Movement magazine. For yes. sure. All right, so yeah. Egypt, when he calls back, you can call too, and you can talk to the producer. The things you learn, Sean Freer, because Egypt is family. Yeah. Trey, yeah. family, man. Shout out to the whole movement family, Sean, everybody, Sharon, all of y'all, man. Love y'all, man. And um, this is a great night, right, for BKS. It's a great Jeff. Night. You having fun, man? I'm having a great time. Yeah, this is how we do, man. Shout out to Jeff Still, and um, the the phone lines are open. Calling right now, six four six two three three one three zero two. Smooth P, you ready to rock out with something? Give us some upbeat. I need I need something. Yeah, something upbeat. No cursing though. No cursing. <laughs> BKS1Radio.com.
Yeah, I can't wait to see my whole family all in one room Saturday you are at the excited. Kenilworth Inn. Now, I, do you have, like, your outfit coordinated? Do you know what you're going to wear? You got no, I'm wearing suit? some jeans and Tims and, like, in, in the sweater and just be sitting in the chair the whole night. <laughs> so a normal, a normal y'all, norm night. Y'all got to come just dressed up looking like Jeff. <laughs> you going to get pulled over in Kenilworth. <laughs> <laughs> Come with some jeans and Tims if you want to. Come with some jeans, Tims, you know. But he makes his jeans and Tims look preppy, though, when he does it. Thank There's you. something, like, stylish and preppy about we it. We got a call. Call it from the 848. State your name when you call it from. You're on the grown. Sexy. Situation. What's the deal with? It's your man, HRJR, your motivational coach. HR, what's Woo! up, family? What it is, bro? What it is? What's up, what's up, man? I'm actually glad you called in, bro, because I'm I'm excited about you right now, and okay. congratulations to you because your book is out, Thank bro. You. Oh, great. Yo-ho. Yes, sir. Tell us about it and, and what's going on, man. You you see, Sally was on the phone. I, dude, I was in the chat room. Woo. He was in the chat room. Mm, mm, mm. Now go ahead, bro. Speak your mind. Man, like I said, man, that's like I said in the chat room. That Sally did that. Ain't nobody really see like the movie she did with Wahlberg and and uh, uh butter. What was that? The Shamar Jackson. Shamar, what was it? The white Shamar Moore. Mm. Yeah. It was like that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, when well, she's on New York Undercover, falling in love with my over right. ad, the ad. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Your phone breaking up a little bit, so I don't know. You must have switched something. You sound different. He got How about now? Yeah, you sound better. All right. Yes. Yeah, sound- yeah, so- Go ahead, bro. No, I was just saying, so yeah, you know, the book dropped. I'm happy about that. I'm talking about it on the show. Just want to remind you and everybody, we're going to be doing the Find a Way to Make a Way show tomorrow night. All right, all right. Because the whole fam is going to be in Kenilworth trying to avoid the police and get some good entertainment. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> That's that. Are the police really that bad in Kenilworth? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, boy. But you know what? Nah, we, I'm going to be honest. We partied out there like four times. I've never had no problems. Never got stopped. When we told them where we was coming from, right? It was like, okay. oh, okay, they must got some type of deal with them or something. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? But I never had no problem. Yeah, I've only gone out there a few times, but I'm ready. I'm excited. I used to work. I had a, a studio with Earl. We used to run a studio out there in Kenworth. I got my freaking dress ready. That's yeah, I'm, I'm ready, man. You ready for Saturday, HR? Man, you know what? Providing the show don't come like they say it's gonna come. If I ain't got to dig myself out, I'm looking to be there. I'm going to keep it Get a real. hotel room. Tell them everybody just come down. Get a hotel room. It's, relax. It's going to be off the hook. The snow. This is going to be worth it. And look, if we only get like four or five inches, people better come on out, man. That's just a dusting. Yeah, that's a dusting. Let me tell you, let me tell you there ain't no way on God's green earth I'm going to a talent show with the kind of women that come out to a BKS1 function. And I'm going to call my wife and be like, yeah, babe, it's snowing out here. I'm going to get in your room at the hotel. <laughs> nah, that. Nah, how you say my I'll, I'll, be, I'll be a walking in the snow if I got you get your ass or rent the room forever. <laughs> or That'll you be can, his new home. Or a short stay be very long stay. You, you can say, babe, and you and the kids come on up. Let's <laughs> get a, it. Let's get a room together. That's a way to do it. And I was just kidding. The police are Could very try good. Try that if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "You're not messing up my happy home." So, real quick, man, tell us about the book and what can people expect. All right, man, the name of the book is Success is a Journey from the Womb to the Tomb. Uh, as we all know, life has its twists and turns, so I kind of take the role of your tour guide and talk about just a few things in life and how to go about dealing with them so you can overcome those obstacles and keep on going to achieve the things you want to achieve. It's kind of like appreciating the ride. It's so much, not so much just looking at success as someplace or something that you have to achieve or get to, but enjoying the, the ride and learning the lessons along the way. So I'll be talking about a little on the show tomorrow night. You want to call me right quick before I take it down. And taking care of the wife and she got a little little cold, so I'm about to go make sure she all right. And then I'll take it down myself and get ready for tomorrow and Saturday. Now, now you know what I got to hit you with. I got to hit you with the topic. <laughs> <laughs> Has someone ever used your past against you? Uh oh. Do do. Oh hell yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. You know. But here's the thing, you know, I got to try and, you know, I, I'm going to be here for a short period of time, so I got to make it impactful okay. and basically say this. First, you have to learn to acknowledge and take, you know what they say it's a lot of times on my show, 
take accountability and responsibility for yourself, your words, and your deeds. All right? When you're the first person to do that, when you can take accountability for whatever it was you did or whatever it was you said, right. and at least attempt to make amends for it, can't nobody hold that against you. I don't even try to hold it against you, but you can easily look them in the face and say, yes, I did that. Did that yesterday, not doing it today, not going to do it tomorrow. So you're trying to convict an innocent person. Be gone. Absolutely. All right now. Absolutely. And that was short and sweet, but yes, it was very he impactful. He said that with some bass in his voice. Yes. <laughs> Got to the point. Yes. So with that, I'm going to tune out. Might watch for a couple more minutes. And I'm out. I see you guys tomorrow. Well, thank All right, you night. for tuning All right. in. Thank night, you so night, much. Have night. a great night. I hope she feels better. All right, y'all. And we'll so, see you on Saturday. Yeah, Smooth B, uh, Smooth P is going to rock out. My bad. My bad. <laughs> I'm giving up some some surprises. Uh-oh. Smooth P is going to rock out with y'all for a couple minutes, and then we're going to come back because I'm already getting the text that we may have another surprise. Oh, boy. And I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Tomorrow night on the Al Show, Rockman Dunbar, in case you don't know, that's the dude from Soul Food, from The Game. You love Rockman. Um, yeah, ladies love Rockman Dunbar, and also the director of this movie, Pastor Brown. He's going to be our guest tomorrow. Nice. But we also going to have uh, uh, Mia Pace, ex Ravens cheerleader, singer. She's going to talk to us about the Ravens. You know, we just got finished with the Super Bowl. Also, Maya Azukina um, from the uh, show Made on MTV and uh, award winning singer is going nice. to be a guest tomorrow. You also, a hot week. Also, a legend may be calling in. On the Al Show tomorrow. So, ladies, fellas, y'all better be be ready to handle this. It's a legend. Okay, now. That I got word of that's going to be checking in with BKS1 Radio during the Rockman Dunbar interview. So, that's tonight on the Al Show, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. BKS1 Radio. We rock, man. Don't let anybody tell you different. The grown, sexy situation, smooth P. Do what you do. We're going to come right back. A couple of minutes. Woo! With Jeff still in the building. Jeffrey still in the building. In What's the name house. of your talk show, man? It's called The Real Deal, Jeff Steele. The Real Deal, Jeff Steele. Jeff Steele. Where can we check it out? Uh, it's in production right now. Um, I film maybe four shows. Uh, but it's like I said, it's a show that features fashion film, music, comedy, and dance. And we keep it real. Is it like a webisode, YouTube, we could check it out, or what? It's going to be an internet show. Uh, we're linking a few things. We have some interviews with some other people that may be interested in it. So, like I said, it's still in production. We're working on it right now. No doubt, man. No doubt. Keep it locked. Be careful on radio. Keep up, keep up,
know him, you know him. You know I'm gonna play with you, right? Yeah, you know I'm tired of being friends. I had seven birthday parties. Seven. 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 And then the Club of Lua gave me one, stretching everybody came out, uh, we played the uh, Def Jam, uh, a couple of artists came out, then Marlo's where I started the most, gave me one, Spot Marlo, and uh, then I left uh, Lua and went down to Key Club, went there rocking my name to the screen, and then the last one we did with Eric Lizzie at the Aquarius Affair we do every year, so I probably the whole month of January. Let's continue because we're going to know our body. We're going to go. BKS1radio.com to the smooth sounds of Mr. Smooth P taking us to the club.
are rocking out to the sounds of Smooth P in the house on BKS1 Radio. This is just some of the vibe y'all gonna hear tonight on February 9th at the Kittleworth Inn with DJ Smooth P going in. Shout out to Smooth P, DJ Mudo. Shout out to Don Juan. The Smooth P is gonna be going in that night. giving you a dose of reality with the latest gossip on your favorite reality TV shows. So if you're grown, sexy, be a part of our situation every Thursday on BKS1Radio.com. Alright, alright, alright. We are back. Show tonight. We are back. Yes, crazy fire. The show was bananas. Giving it to you. What? Bananas. Grown, sexy situation. He going in over there. 
Jeff rocking out over here. Crazy wow. show tonight, man. Smooth P's getting ready for Saturday. I love how I can that, get my dancing shoes That out. topic, nobody was bold enough to call in, though, and tell us well, a story. Well, we were so distracted out of, you know, all the great interviews and yes. people that were calling in. Yes. You know, we got a little sidetracked. I, I, know, I know Jeff got some things to say, talk about. Yeah, what's going on, Jeff? What's going on? Well, you asked me for my bio. I told you just, well, basically I wrote a six-hour show, but uh, kind of to find it. But um, I just want to mention the fact, and I got to give my props to John Blasingame. Shout I out to John. I love John Blasingame. Yeah. I started out modeling at age 16. I auditioned for his show to be in his International Model of the Year competition. I didn't win. However, with the network and the people that, and the venue that he brought there, I continued to support him and be in his shows, and I met so many people. Right. Before you know it, I was doing hair ads, skin ads, um, gracing the runways. You see, you see. I, um, appeared in shows um, with Mario Van Peebles. Nice. Um, several other top models. And I pretty much, you know, got into the, um, continued the modeling field because I had the passion for fashion. Somehow along the line, I'll gain weight and got heavy. Yeah, Jeff is the man. I try to be. I used to be. He's Mr. Suave. Speaking of the past, but we're not going to go there. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, at this particular time, um, I hadn't worked for John in years. Okay. And in 2010, I was assisting him with the All-Star Fashion Weekend, nice. uh, which was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday mm -hmm. venue. Mm -hmm. And I saw this lady looking at me Friday night at the event. And I'm like, okay. you know, She said, nice outfit. I said, okay, fine. So then that Saturday, Paulette Jones... Now she's on a cell phone calling the director for the movie Partner. Saying, mm. listen, I found your Joe King. Oh, wow. One of the old school gangsters who runs Brooklyn with his two sons that don't know their brothers. Right, right, right. So he couldn't make it that Saturday. He showed up that Sunday. And I was wearing what I wore in the movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he looked at me and said, dude, you have to be in this movie. Oh, that's great. Now, that's a blessing. I, I was just hanging backside being a special assistant to John Blasigan. Mm -hmm. But just being the right place at the right time, being around positive people. That's right. right. Um, as a result of that, uh, I did Partner, my first movie, my first starring role. Mm -hmm. And the same director, Darrell Smith, uh, actually cast me for a small part in this movie, Cold Cash Money, which is still in production. And I thank God that I'm blessed with parts that were easy for me to play, speaking of the past. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> I was with some of my friends when uh, Darrell asked me, he said, well, listen, this character calls for you to be an old school OG hustler gangster who runs a gambling joint uh -uh. and has a son by your wife mm -hmm. and a son by your mistress mm. that don't know their brothers. Oops. Mm. And uh, you go hard as a gangster. Can you play that? My boys just dropped out rolling. <laughs> Ah. Not that I was. I just was around a lot of people, so I was able to play that character. Right, right, right. And Cold Cash Money, um, I don't have a speaking part, but I make it rain up in there. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Talking with cash. That's talking with cash. What I'm Money talking talks. about. But the funny thing is, at uh, the affair uh, just two weeks ago that mm -hmm. we were at, right. um, which um, it was John Blasingham's event, mm -hmm. in which it was my launching for the Jeff Steele show and my birthday party, um, Jersey Films told me that he wrote a part just for me. Nice. To be in, and it's going to be a horror film That's called a, The Chosen One. Really? Uh oh. You, you Are you going to die? I'm, I'm, they're going to let me kill a few people up in here. Uh oh. Uh, oh shoot. Now. That's what I'm talking about. Murdering people. <laughs> but but the, I don't want to give away two things, but do you want me to tell you what I'm going to play? Uh -oh. Yes. Yes. Um, well, it's a horror film. Uh, the devil comes back from the dead. Oh, God. And starts recruiting all these stripper-type women. <laughs> <laughs> that, go, that go around I'm killing brothers. I'm mad he said stripper-type uh, women. Okay. Devil that's recruiting stripper-type women. <laughs> to seduce and build his cult. Wow. And the police Are you don't, the devil? No, the okay. police don't know what to do. The pastor doesn't know what to do. I play a reformed pimp that got saved named Superman. Oh, wow. I love it. Okay. And that's with the S on the pimp. chest. Jeff he knows with the what S to on do. His chest. The pastor comes to me and he says, I know who can take it to the street and get, get to the bottom of this. Uh -oh. So I haven't seen the full script yet, but he just gave me a little insight. That so is hilarious. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be hilarious. I like it's that. Be funny. Yeah. Do you need a sidekick in that? <laughs> oh yeah. Mini pimp. Do you need yes. a radio interview in that? I don't mind getting my hands dirty, going in the club and pulling those strippers out of there. <laughs> Away from the darkness. By any means necessary. Yes. Rabbi. By 
her nipple, grab her toe, whatever. <laughs> just grab her and get her out the darkness. You know what I realized, guys? I'm the only girl here yes, tonight. Jackie abandoned night. me. Yes. So I'm feeling the testosterone in the air. Sausage. <laughs> I'm mad about all these triple pulls. So I but like anyway. it. I like it, man. That's that seems yeah, that sounds like a dope treatment. Well, yeah. Like I said, I'm happy. I'm blessed. Uh, as far as speaking, the show topic was has the past affected you, and it's affected me because the past, like I said, is the past. But with the with no test, there's no testimony, mm-hmm. and I've never been a type of person to judge anyone, although people judge me. And if you've seen my Facebook, um, I'm single with no kids. You know. I met a nice young lady. I used to, like I said, I worked at the car dealership. Okay, okay. And uh, I saw a beautiful young lady. She looked like she could be a, a video vixen, a nope. supermodel. Uh-uh. I went to service and checked her record to see what she was having done in her car. I, and I had enough time to go home and change clothes. Mm-hmm. Oops. <laughs> I am mad he went and changed clothes. Came, Men do that too. <laughs> came back and we were talking for hours. I mean, I, I was, we just vibed. Nice. And so I texted her. And she looked at my Facebook, Uh-oh. and she said, "I have no time for players." Wow! Ooh. Now I've been working even after she see, met you and you talked for hours. She's seen she my Facebook. Per- <laughs> she right. took a perception and ran. All right, we, I'm glad you brought that up, brother. We, look, we're gonna it's, stop this Facebook right now. Facebook is the devil. No, 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 no. We're gonna we're gonna cut this out right now. You cannot judge a brother by his Facebook. Absolutely. I'm not. in there with mad female. Look at the business I am. Exactly. Just exactly. Holding, we take exactly. pictures. We 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 hold. We cheesing do. it up. Come on, cheesing it up. Those are just pictures. That doesn't mean he a player. Models, models actresses. I mean, I've yes. been in the business for 30 years. This, 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 Jeff, this, listen. This is a good looking brother. If she just He's blocked a blessing, don't worry about it, brother. That, that means she wasn't the right one. Next. The right one's coming coming along. Damn. Like I was worried about it. Service. There you go. <laughs> Service was open at 8 o'clock that night. <laughs> y'all got to cut that out. Females, for, y'all do that Say real next. hard with, with, with the females. You see, Keep it moving. You see a lot of pictures with a guy with a lot of females. It doesn't mean he, he a player. Nothing. Especially not in this business. Absolutely not. Not the business that Jeff did. Not on Facebook, because you can get tagged in photos. Yeah, You're just out and about at an innocent party or something. You're in a group shot. It's cropped, and next thing you know, you're being judged. And the young lady said, well, I know you were out New Year's Eve doing your thing. I said, I was in church. Exactly. Hello. Now. She said, yes, I was doing my thing. What? For the Lord. Praise in Jesus. In church. There you go. And now he's out one in the morning, but guess what? He's on a radio show. Amen. Working. working. See? Working. Yeah. Promoting himself, trying well, to do the right thing. Like I said, you know what? Stop Pe- judging. People like that, you don't got time for. Right. Because if, if you if you got judged that heavily for something as simple as that, imagine if there was really a doubt in, in her mind about something. Right. What, you know, the trial and tribulation you might have to go through. Well, see, so. that's one thing I go through now um, in this business with the people exposure to, as far as the ladies. Right, yeah. right. Uh, a lot of women can't handle it. They feel insecure. I mean, yeah. I gave all of this up for years. It was just a dormant period in which I did not be involved with fashion, film, or nothing like yeah. that. But I'll never do that again. The woman has to be at one with me. Yeah. She has to understand what I do. And if she can't, we're going to keep it moving. And my thing is this. You know what? This, this is what I always say, too, about people. For one, if someone is your mate, you need to trust them. You need to trust them no matter what. People are going to be people when things might happen. But you know what? You have to give you the benefit of the doubt unless something has happened. If nothing has happened, don't persecute you for something before it happens. Yeah, you might be around beautiful women. You know, because it's, it's part of the business. But you know what? A person has to have enough trust in you to to, to feel that you're not going to do nothing. They don't have to worry about that. And if you know, and if they're in, too insecure themselves for that, like I said, the same thing. They're not the one for you. Call it. Years ago, I was on. Hello. Uh, Hello. We got a caller. Caller from the nine seven three. State your name. Where you calling from? What's up, Norm? It's Egypt. What's going on, man? What's up, mommy? Hey. How you doing, baby girl? What's up, baby? Hey guys. Hi everybody. That was a great show, you guys. Thank yes. you. Thanks, E. But you know, you know we gonna, what we're going to do together. I already put the word in, so it's going down. Yo, definitely. You know I'm in here. You know I'm in here. No mm-hmm. doubt. No doubt. Egypt, this is Andrea Starr. Great to meet you. I was at a small event not too long ago and meeting people in the room. And, um, of course, uh, someone was a big fan talking about the show. And someone was like, wait, I know Egypt. And I did not get the woman's name. I apologize. But everywhere I go, I keep running into people that know you and just love you. So I can't wait to meet you finally in person. Yeah, she's a great person. Yes, that that is for sure. It's a blessing. Oh, my That's God. Right. I can't wait to meet you as well. You got me blushing over here, girl. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's happened several times. E- well, you Egypt. do good, good comes Egypt. back to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. Hello, Egypt. Egypt. This is Jeff Steele. <laughs> What's up, man? Hey. <laughs> That's my dude right there, Norm. <laughs> we go way back. Wow. I even yeah, designed him. Yeah. All right, well, how you doing, darling? 
I'm blessed. I see you about to get your show going on. I'm really proud of you. Trying, trying to be positive, inspirational, motivational. That's what we do here. There you go. That's That's definitely what's up. So, so E, um, tell us what's going on as far as like the movement. You got any? Can you give us a sneak peek what what to expect in the next issue? Because the Michelle Obama issue was That's rocking. Hot. Yeah. That hot. was serious. Actually, we have um, the president of the United States is covering our next issue. Actually, wow. oh, she's nice. and wow. yeah, yeah, we we definitely showcasing him. I mean, because we're really proud of the fact that he, Absolutely. you know, this is his second term. Yes, two terms. And we we gonna get behind him a little something, huge. something. You know, yes. no doubt, no doubt. We have a lot of we have a lot of things in store, and, and actually, BKS One Radio is a part of a lot of the things that we have in store. So right. we just ain't gonna call out that just yet. No, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it really straight. Before we throw it out, man. Absol- absolutely. You know I know. You, you know I know. Now, yeah, I know. Now, looking forward to Saturday. God willing, it's not gonna be no crazy weather. We gonna be all right. We if we you gotta get. No, I got a truck. I got a truck. Go. I'm coming. Rainy, sleet, snow, or fall, man. I, I went, you know, a lot of people were asking me if it was a rain, a, a snow date, and I'm like, I'm not sure, but I'm no. coming. We go. Yes, yeah, snowmobiles, yeah, it skis, it, whatever. I you mean, if take. it's yeah. snowshoes. Real talk. If it's 15 feet of snow, then it's probably gonna be a snow date. But if it's like five inches, that's a six dusting. inches. So what? That's a dusting. Dust the car off and come on down. The parkway will be shoveled and plowed and salted. I filmed the movie part yeah, of they, the they, they take care of that parkway. You're right about that. Yeah. Now, now, E, you know I got to put you on the spot. Uh-oh. Yeah. I got to put you on. So, Egypt Audrey, Audrey Egypt Blanc is one of the judges that mm, night for Who that's Owns right. the Mic. Absolutely. Now, E, tell the listeners right now, what are you, what are you looking for and how do you basically judge? Basically, I look for confidence. A lot of times people come on, they come on and you can tell they're completely nervous and scared from when they stand up there. A lot of times, if your confidence is not on point, it, 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 it deters the judges. It makes us feel like, okay, well, you're not sure of yourself, so we can't be too sure of you either. Right. So, to me, the confidence and, of course, the, uh, the, the, your voice, of course, we want to be able to hear if you have a range or if you can control, or, or you know, so a lot of different. There's a lot of different aspects on the on the singing aspect of it. But the comedians, right. for some reason, Norm, you guys pick a lot of winners as far as comedians are concerned. I mean, all the comedians are hilarious, <laughs> hands down. <laughs> I truly enjoy each comedian that you've had on your show. I That's really enjoy them. And, and you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. Maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe I shouldn't. Uh-huh. I don't know. P may have to shut me up, but. I, I know the comedians that's going to be in this one, and I mm-hmm. think the com- it may be a comedian that may own the mic unless a singer really step up in this wow. one. Yeah, it may be a comedian that Uh-oh. owns the mic. So I need to get ready to but laugh. That would be a good look because Bob Sumner going to be in the building, yes, so that exactly. might be a good look for him or her. And so, yeah. so singers, singers right now listening, if you're in the competition, yes, really step your game. There is going to be two spoken word artists, I think, yes, two. in this one. Okay. So, so you know, get your get your get your poetry ear on, your spoken word ear on, because I think there's going to be two of them. Yeah, your snaps snap. and your your beret. Hey, no, you know what? You guys had. What was your question of the day? It was a question of the day about your past or something. Yeah, let's let's deal with that that question. What was let's the read question? It, that question to E. Um, the question is. Um, have you never used your past against you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Has he had to put on ever, green glasses? Yeah. Has has <laughs> anyone ever? <laughs> I want to speak on that. Okay. Norm did that to me when I was in, in at DKS One Radio uh, by throwing on a song I did years ago. <laughs> Not Storm, Norm. So you didn't Norm do that. Did that to me. <laughs> you ain't right, Storm. Too funny, too She's funny, family. too too funny. I remember that. Yo, E, you know I just had to show some show people who Egypt Audrey Block really Audrey Egypt Uh-oh. Block really is because. Uh-oh. They think they just know you from the movement. They don't know that you used to go in on that mic. Oh my god, he blew my spot up, Jeff. He blew my spot up, you guys. Oh boy, he had to dig up the records. Now, it, it was still fire, though, E. It was still fire. That's what's up. Now, now, E, be be nice because we may introduce you to that song. You can't do that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't kick over my, my DJ equipment, E. That's all. 
<laughs> Yo, that's, oh my that's my heart. That's my family, man. Egypt is my family. No that's my sister. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we're going to rock out. We're going to do great things. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to next week because I told I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to do the rollout on next week. Okay. Okay. So we got a call. After, after you guys finish the show, hit me up. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, thanks. Thank for you guys. You guys did a great show, and love you guys. And I'll be talking to y'all the next show yeah. because I love, love you, Egypt. Radio. See Always you on listening. Saturday. See you on Saturday. See you. All right, day. No doubt. You See guys, take care. Have a blessed one. All right, I'll talk night. to you in the field. All right. Peace. All right, Peace. Peace. All right, y'all. Big shout out to uh, Audrey Egypt Blanc of the Movement Magazine. Yeah, I just keep Chief. running the people that just, oh, you know, Egypt. Oh, she's amazing. High school friends. French just know from let around me, the let way. Let me tell you something. When it comes to me, E, and just people like, you know, Soups, P, Chill, the team here, you, whatever. If you run into anybody, Jeff, still that, that hate on any of us, something ain't right with them. Oh. Amen. Talk about it. Something ain't right with them because we good people. Yeah. We rocking out. We trying to help people. We trying to do positive things or whatever like this. Something didn't go right with them. So check their stories thoroughly and hit us up. Hit us up. Just saying. Because the BKS1 Radio, the Movie Magazine, Jeff Stills, The Real Deal. The yeah, Real Jeff, Jeff Still. Still. The Real Deal, Jeff Still. We here for the people, man. For sure. You know, we here for the people. John Blank is the game name of the Jeff uh, The Real Deal. The Real Deal. That's what's up. No doubt, no doubt. So just keep a lot of BKS on radio. And today, don't forget, again, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was about to say that. The HRJR. HRJR show. 8 p.m. Um, it's 8 p.m. to yep. 9 p.m. Yep. So that's the final way to make it way show. That's 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. is the ladies only women wear high heels. heels. That's right. Fun Sexy night. ladies are out. Yeah. Tune in. And, and again, Rockman Dunbar. Yes. Um, he's gonna be he's gonna be on, ladies. Trust me. It's gonna be a full packed house. Also, we're gonna have a beautiful ex Ravens cheerleader in the yeah. building Uh-oh. and a phenomenal singer. She's gonna be live in the house tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then we got the beautiful Maya uh Azukina. And um before we, we leave, we're gonna have to read that that uh advertisement there because oh, we want yes. y'all to to check this out. This is gonna be the next day yes, after our Sunday event. the 10th. So yes. this is a fun weekend this weekend. Yes. yes. We've got Rock Who Owns the Mic on Saturday. And on Sunday, guys, February 10th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., the Ultimate Valentine's Soiree. It's $60 per couple or $35 for singles. A Valentine's retreat with taking tea in style. So those of you that love a little tea time, this is a great way to come back and relax. Bring your mate, $60 a couple or $35 singles. It's pamper yourself or a loved one with a totally unique experience. The Ultimate Valentine's Day Soiree. You'll have live music, dancing, great food, gourmet desserts, and lots of exotic teas. A special gift for all guests. It is at the Princeton Meadow Event Center, 545 Meadow Road in Princeton Junction, New Jersey. And you can purchase tickets at Taking Tea in Style, period, eventbrite.com. And, like and also, event. the time has been extended to 7 p.m. Uh, now it's 7 p.m. Yes. We it's, just it's, keep going. It's, seven, it's 7, 7 p.m. Oh, and, going. Yeah, and you look on any one of our pages, uh, BKS1 Radio Network page or Best Guest Secrets Entertainment, you'll see different postings of it up so you can get more information. So just make sure you keep it locked. Great things going on with BKS1 Radio. Sure. And, and it looks like we may be going out to Atlanta, man. Hot That's Atlanta. going to be huge. Yes. ATL. Yeah, the premiere for Pastor Brown. I, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this. If I get in trouble, I can I can handle it. I can handle <laughs> you it. You can edit it. I got your back. But the premiere is going to be at T.D. Jake's church. church. Wow. Big. wow. It's a huge church. All of Hollywood is going to be up in there for that Definitely. premiere. And they asked us personally to come out. Nice. Yes. To uh, cover it and everything. So, it's a big deal. Uh, yeah, some good things is happening for BKS from radio and the family, man. Don't. Again, don't we sleep. love y'all. Don't For sleep. Sure. Don't and sleep. Don't hate. Don't hate. Just and some, no judgment from hate. the past. No judgment from the past. Some don't hate. Congratulate. Hate. Exactly. Yes, just congratulate because we're all doing great things. We're very proud of Jeff Still. For sure. Jeffrey Thank Still you. and his talk show. Again, tell people about it and when, when they can check it out. Well, it's going to be an internet show called The Jeff Steele Show featuring fashion, film, music, comedy, and dance. I'm your host, Jeff Steele. Um, we're going to do it all at the same time. They're giving me one hour to do it. It's a show that's inspirational, motivational, and real. Uh, I would like you all to go on Facebook and like the Jeff Steele Show page or type at the Jeff Steele Show, and it'll show up. And like the page. Look at our trailers. 
Uh, Professor X is our executive editor. His work is, is, is phenomenal. And my shout out to my executive producer, Jimmy McCoy, who saw something in me. I sent him a little something um, as a thank you because he did not judge me. Right. Mm. He, he, he saw something in me and he gave me a chance. And I really appreciate that because a lot of people, I made mistakes in the past. Right. And people will not let the have. past go. Exactly. And what I learned to do is to stay around positive people. And that's why I love when I go around John Blasingham and you all, because it's a, when I leave there, I feel so inspired. Exactly. Yep. And I just sometimes, you know, you just have to, you, you have to, to change your life, you got to change your life, you got to change your ways. There you go. And, cha and, and change the way you think. That's right. There you go. And Einstein said, it is insanity to do the same, same thing, thing over and over, and over again and, and expect, expect a different, different result. result. Absolutely. Exactly. So, with that being said, I really love BKS1Radio.com. Oh, so Thank you for having me in the house. And we appreciate I am, you, sir. I am an Aquarius, so I will be in the house. <laughs> <laughs> He's been partying all month, ladies and gentlemen. This will be the eighth party, eighth birthday party. Partying all month. All right, y'all. So you know what it is. Again, keep it locked to BKS1 Radio Smooth P. I want you to take us out with something great, man. And uh, again, it's been another great night on BKS1 Radio. Any closing okay. remarks from anyone? I want to wish you an early happy birthday. I Thank hope you. I know that this is your year of just uh, blowing up on the scene. You've always been big and great, but this is your year. 2013. And I'm so excited for you. So an early happy birthday Thank to you. you. That means a lot. Yes. I, mean, I just want to leave this This is my people. partner. I love her. <laughs> I just want to say to people, stop blocking your own favor. Stop being your own worst enemy. You know, just open up and receive what's supposed to come to you and stop, stop all the hate and all the negativity because... Negative energy brings negative energy. Positive energy brings positive energy. Absolutely. So give what Amen. you deserve. Absolutely. And again, all I got to say is I see all y'all Saturday. Saturday. The Kenilworth Inn. Saturday night. It's get going in. down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you already tomorrow know. up until 2 is the last time they can get advanced tickets. Up okay. until 2, right? Yes. Up until 2. Yeah, then it locks, it locks then down. Then it locks. Then you got to pay at the door. It's $5 difference at the door. Yep. Tickets are only twenty dollars. You're getting a lot. Trust me. When you see the entertainment, just the talent the food, alone, the talent it's alone. Great. Yeah, food, exactly. Drink. The experience. Trust me. You're going to want to be the networking in there is going to be bananas. And it's so, a very nice facility. Also. Yes, yes. So make sure you come on out that Saturday at the Kenworth. And doors open at seven p.m. If you get your table now, look. You want to get your table. You, you don't want to be standing up. So get there early. You know what I'm saying? Doors open at seven p.m. The, the uh, show starts exactly at. 8 p.m. Sharp. Sharp. And then we transition right from the show into the party to the birthday bash. Jeff, you know you invited to the presidential suite with the team afterwards. I'll be in the VIP in the presidential yeah, whoever, suite. Whoever gets those lucky four tickets that we're going to give out so you can come chill and party, eat, and drink with us in the presidential suite after. We're just going to keep partying all night. I hope you ain't got nothing to do the next day. No, I took the day off the next day. Right. I'm going to get a room. <laughs> I took the day off. I'm ready. Yeah, I already got my room. Hopefully, I may find my wifey up in wow, there. Wow, here we, we go. go. Let's find him a birthday gift. I'm wow. saying. I'm saying. Just saying. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Keep it locked. We out of here. Smooth P, take us out, man. Woo. The grown sexy situation. That was a nice birthday wish. <laughs> we love birthdays. February 9th, same. Yeah. It's that day. This moment, oh, I'm saying that you've always been mine. Girl, when I'm alone.